Do you want to put the two-part dosing days behind you and graduate to a calcium reactor to maintain your alkalinity and calcium in your aquarium? Stay tuned. Hello, this is Jeremy from Coralview, welcoming you back to another episode of CVTV. Today we will begin a three-part video series dedicated to calcium reactors. Episode 1. What is a calcium reactor and what do I need to get started? Episode 2. Assembly and installation of a reef octopus calcium reactor. Episode 3. Fine-tuning and troubleshooting your calcium reactor. What is a calcium reactor? Corals, invertebrates, and even coralline algae all constantly use up calcium and alkalinity in our aquariums. A calcium reactor is a piece of equipment that helps simultaneously maintain alkalinity and calcium throughout the day, attaining the ultimate instability and growth of stored in corals. What are the advantages of a calcium reactor? Fully automated dosing of calcium and alkalinity. A calcium reactor is capable of supplying a tank system with enough alkalinity and calcium carbonate 24-7. You do not need to mix your solutions as the calcium reactor infuses tank water with all the alkalinity and calcium needed. Scalability. A calcium reactor is a perfect solution when your two-part dosing is no longer cost effective. Using two-part solutions on aquariums with high coral load or large systems may become too expensive. There is a calcium reactor for every size tank. Does not increase salinity or add chloride to your tank water. A calcium reactor takes water from your tank and saturates it with melted coral skeleton. It does not add any salt or elements other than what is in the media itself. Long-term cost effectiveness. The cost of keeping a calcium reactor is very low. Technically, you only need to top off the media on average three to four times a year. In comparison to two-part bottles, the media is very inexpensive. If your reactor is using a pH probe, it only needs to be replaced once a year. CO2 bottle refills average between $10 to $20, and you only need to refill them one to two times a year, depending on the size of your bottle. What are the disadvantages of a calcium reactor? Upfront cost. The initial investment of setting up a calcium reactor can nearly be two times higher than most automated two-part dosing systems due to the equipment required. Intricate setup. Setting up a reactor takes consideration and planning. You must make sure that the reactor is properly sized for your system. Patience, as the reactor does not get dialed in overnight, it is a process of constant tweaking based on the ever-fluctuating demand. And safety, you are dealing with a pressurized container. What do you need to get to set up a calcium reactor? Reactor. We must find a reactor that fits our tank's needs. Most reactors out there have a suggested tank range. We need a reactor that is large enough that does not require constant upkeep, but not too large where it becomes inefficient and you are wasting money by overbuying and wasting energy by running excess. A reactor must have an efficient, powerful, and good quality recirculating pump. The recirculating pump is the heart of the calcium reactor. It mixes water and CO2 gas that create a semi-acidic water solution that allows for the media in the reactor to melt and release alkalinity and calcium back into the water itself. The recirculating pump also dictates the performance of the reactor. It forces water to run through the media multiple times before leaving the reactor back to the tank. The more times the water cycles through the media over and over again, the higher the saturation of available alkalinity and calcium ions. A reactor must have watertight pH probe holder. Most media in the reactor starts to melt when the pH dips below 6.7. The pH probe allows us to monitor and even control the pH level. If the pH level in the reactors is too high, media will not melt. On the other hand, if the pH level is too low, it can waste your media by turning it into sludge, which can also restrict flow and destroy your recirculation pump. 
a reactor showed recirculate injected CO2. In the old days, reactors used to accumulate air at the top of the main chamber, which eventually would purge back into the main system. It was wasteful, caused instability, and countless frustration. Most reactors today incorporate a more efficient way to recycle the CO2 and keep the pH level low while using less CO2 in the process. A reactor should have a bubble counter. A bubble counter is a simple and convenient way to visually monitor the amount of CO2 actually being injected into the reactor. Media. When choosing your calcium carbonate media for the reactor, there are a couple things to consider. Melting point. The lower the pH, the more CO2 will be required. Size. Smaller media usually has a higher pH melting point and will melt faster than larger media. We want media that is porous with lots of surface area and won't restrict flow. CO2 tank. Carbon dioxide has many uses, but is most commonly used for carbonating your favorite soda. Carbon dioxide can be supplied in different purities, but for our application, commercial grade CO2 used for welding is good enough. We do suggest steering away from CO2 used for paint pulp purposes, as sometimes it is mixed with other elements or gases. CO2 regulator and solenoid. When picking out a regulator, look for one that has two pressure gauges. One gauge that measures the pressure of the CO2 in the cylinder, and the other that measures the delivery pressure. Never use a regulator made for gas other than CO2. It's best that the regulator can output low pressures under 10 PSI. A good CO2 check valve is also required to prevent damage to the regulator due to backflow. pH probe and controller. Here are two things that are not required, but fall into a highly recommended list to make your life easier. As we mentioned before, most media in the reactor starts to melt when the pH dips below 6.7. A controller makes managing the pH level much easier, especially if the regulator or needle valve is not precise enough to maintain a very stable CO2 bubble count. It will monitor the pH level and keep the CO2 flowing when the pH is stable or too high, but turn it off if the pH level gets too low. Feed source. The feed source is by far the root of most issues with calcium reactors. Contrary to popular belief, calcium reactors do not require a large feed pump to push water into the reactor. Keep in mind that calcium reactors are not built to really run pressurized. A slight pressure of up to 5 psi is all needed to operate safely. Anything higher may result in joints and seals leaking. Anything more than 10 psi, you could possibly blow the lid off. We need a pump that is going to feed the reactor at a very low flow. That's it. In essence, you want the feed pump and the CO2 to have equal pressure into the reactor. Issues arise when one of the two is higher than the other. For this reason, the best way to feed a calcium reactor is by using a peristaltic dosing pump like the Kimor FXSTP. It allows real-time flow adjustments between 0 and 120 milliliters per minute to easily overcome inconsistencies and set the reactor's effluent with just enough pressure at a predictable meter grade. This is the first episode of a three video series where we'll cover calcium reactors. Our goal is to help reefers like you maintain successful reef tanks by providing you with key information that will make using a calcium reactor easy to understand and use. On episode number two, we'll show you how to assemble, install, and set up an actual calcium reactor running on a live system. If you haven't already, click on that subscribe button to stay up to date on all the latest product reviews and tutorial videos. You can also follow us on Twitter at CoralView and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash CoralView Aquarium Products.